What a great way to start February for the Huskies as they get the win over NCHC rival the Omaha Mavericks. Hello and welcome inside the studio for your post-game report. I'm your host, Joe Scrella. The Huskies get it done on home ice as they continue to dominate at the Herb Brooks National Hockey Center. Let's take a look at how tonight's game unfolded. Starting things off in the first period, Huskies return home. After the split last weekend in Duluth, Easton Brodzinski trying to spark a little life into his game. Jake Wallen, though, he gives a shot to the back of the Mavericks forward, and he's going to the sin bin. Two minutes to think about it. Omaha on the power play, looking to do a little damage. Mesner slips one down to David Pope, and the Mavericks' leading scorer shocks Rennick over the near side as he never saw it. It went right through Borgen's legs. The third line for the boys in black staying in on the action. They kept it going all night. Tyler Vessel finds his winger Pope. He rips one on net, but Rennick able to kick that one aside. Seconds later, a gorgeous stretch pass from Stewart. Springs Zach Jordan in alone, but his wrister misses everything. St. Cloud State trails a goal heading into the second period. In the second, not enough shots on net for the Huskies, though in the first, they put the puck on net and good things happen. Nick Palingfield feeds Judd Peterson. He sends a quick wrister over the shoulder of Wenninger and the Huskies tie the game, Judd's fourth goal of the season. Sometimes just shooting the puck can change everything. Now it's Judd just throwing one on net and Nick Paling comes flying in and floats one top corner. The Huskies are up a goal early in the second. The Mavericks trying to get physical though. This one came a little late on the play as back checking was Luke Nogard. After the play, he's going to the box. He gives a little shot and two minutes for him. The power play comes to an end though for the Huskies as the Mavericks penalty kill was phenomenal. They send this 200 feet. Pope though sneaks one past Trenick as he gets a nice pass from Snowguard and throws it on net and he puts one past the goaltender as he gets his second of the game or did he? After second look at it, it's no goal. St. Cloud State still just trails by a goal. But it didn't take very long for Pope to get that one right back. A nice play in the slot. He puts one top right corner. And just like that, the Mavericks tie the game. Later, Mikey Asimont trying to do it for his team right off the faceoff. The shot gets blocked on the point right on to 19 and White's tape. And he gets his 10th tally of the season. We head into the third period. Just over a minute into the period, Jack Ashan holds the puck in the zone. He feeds Robbie Jackson, who usually shoots from this area, but a nice finesse pass to Easton Brodzinski. He beats Wenger to give the Huskies a two-goal lead. Huskies starting to pour it on. Brodzinski wants more. He throws a quick shot on net, and he picks up his own rebound, looking for his second of the game. But the Mavericks netminder keeps the game a one-goal game. But the puck pops down low as the Mavericks try to climb back. Mesner feeds David Pope, and his name has been called a lot today. He completes the hat trick, his 19th goal of the season. Mavericks pull within one. But then Robbie Jackson with a beautiful hustle play on the empty net. He puts it in the wide open net, and the leading scorer for St. Cloud State gets another. Let's take a look at the stats from tonight's game at the, as the Huskies get the win 5-3. to three. Shots on goal 42-18. to 18. The Huskies only had five shots after the first period. They definitely picked that up. Hits 12 to 10 in favor of the Mavericks. And the power plays, a couple of power plays on both ends as the Huskies went one for three on the man advantage. And the Mavericks were two for four, scoring chances a couple on both sides as the Huskies were able to get eight and five for Nebraska Omaha. And faceoffs pretty close as well, 35 31. Mavericks get that tally. Yeah, we, it was, we didn't play good for two periods. Um, we had some guy. We had some guys going. Petey's line was was outstanding tonight, and and you know we had a handful of other guys, and then and then we we just kind of had flat tires going, mm -hmm. you know. And we had three you know three wheels going, and the fourth one was flat, and then mm -hmm. then the uh, uh, we got going offensively in the second, but still we were we weren't there. And in, in the third period, everybody played, and it mm -hmm. was a, it was a very good third period for us at home to do the things we had to do. We made one mistake. The, and that's when they scored, and that was it. Outside of that, it was a, a, almost a flawless period for us. And, and throughout our lineup, everybody was playing. So mm -hmm. we fought through a game where we weren't real good. Um, we were loose, mm -hmm. uh, but we fought through it. Mm -hmm. 
So a strong second and third period sparks the Huskies to the 5-3 win over the conference rival. Thank you for joining us here on Fox Sports North. Tomorrow night, the Huskies will get another crack at it as they look for the sweep on home ice. Thank you for joining us. I'm Joe Scarella. We'll see you next time on Fox Sports North.